So we're back onto the Monster 659 engine that is going to be in my next little custom monster project. Um, I'm going to start pulling it apart. I don't know that I really want to pull it apart. <laughs> Maybe I get into it, but realistically, I want to check the crank shimming. So I just want to see how tight the crankshaft is. Possibly vary some gearbox ratios with some um, getting some custom gears made up. Maybe. Um, and I'm dry clutching it, so there's a couple of things I may need to do to the input shaft. But today I want to pull the horizontal head off, which probably the easiest one to get off, and just look at if we can put these cylinders and heads, which I will call the DS style two valve cylinder and head, because it's like the original 1000 DS head, as opposed to the traditional head. Uh, see if we can put these things onto the earlier cylinders and vice versa. And I think the reason you can't is primarily the oil feed, um, but we'll look at that as we go. The belt covers out of the way. Do the head bolts on these it helps to have a correct tool this is a 14 mil 12 point hex tool because these sort of everything 2005 onwards has a 12 point 14 mil hex nut and you really need the proper tools to be able to undo them well not undo them talk them up definitely but not undo them but that first crack can be quite tight so it's nice to have a proper tool just to crack them originally see if we can get to the bottom one without taking the camera out Getting into this bottom one can be a little bit frustrating. It is easier if you pull the cam pulley off and then you can get more of a swing on it, but I'm not at that point yet. Should be able to use a 14 mil spanner now. Yeah. Unlike the previous traditional two valve engine, these ones have a head gasket. So if we can just tap a bit. There go. They're also dowled like a four valve. So it might help to have some sort of leverage tool, something that isn't steel is always nice, they don't mark anything. But often they just needed to be wobbled and tapped off. Should have a patience to, to see how long you can avoid being medieval.
sometimes you need to get in there with a bit of uh, a bit of CRC or inox or DWF and get it onto the onto the dowels and, and lubricate the dowels a bit and that often helps them come apart. Okay. Wobble it around for a while. And it comes off. And so there we have it. So this here is the head gasket. It doesn't really want to come off. Right up, there we go. Like most head gaskets these days, it's a steel shim. I actually think it's actually a single layer. It's not a multi-layer, it's a steel, thin, single layer steel. It's got some rubberized stuff around the, the uh, oil returns, which is that hole there. That's the oil feed. Got a little dowel in it, and there's these two dowels here that locate the head on the cylinder like a four valve. And that's our oil feed to the head and the oil return. And if you turn this head over, there might be some oil in it. So, because when it's sitting there, it collects oil down here. And uh, so the valve's open nicely. There we go. I'm going to pop the cylinder off. I'll um, rotate the engine to top dead centre. Okay, so we just spin it around to top dead centre. One thing you'll notice is the piston comes up. It says quite a big dome on it. And that's because all these engines, 659, 696 and 796, use the same cylinder head. And that chamber size there, realistically, has to be sized for the, the 796, which is 803 cc's, so that it hasn't got too much compression. Um, it's a fairly nice tight chamber but because this engine's a 650 and not an 800 it needs much more dome on the piston to bring the compression ratio up to something that you want because if it had the same if it had a flat top piston uh, the same shape as the 796 which I'm not sure if it's flat top or not actually but if it had the same piston shape as the 796 it would have much less compression so I'll slide the cylinder up and to give it a tap, these are just three bonded on, but the three bonds can really stick them in. It's amazing how well three bonds can stick them on. Oh, it's good if you want to pull the heads off, not cylinders. In the old days with the stupid harding, hardening seal, we always had to pull the heads, pull the cylinders off and reseal base gaskets if you pulled the head off. But these days you can pull the head off and leave the cylinder there, which is less work. Get a bit more medieval on it. And we'll get our friendly tyre lever. Okay. Be gentle. There's a little dowel pin at the base that helps locate everything. Okay, so slide the cylinder up. Spur. 
close the piston. I'm going to leave the piston in the bottom of the cylinder. So I'll just get, flip the circlip out. My circlip clipping tool, so I usually use a little screwdriver and little multis and a pick and a magnet. And in that, we should get it out without losing it. Or hurting ourselves too much. Okay. Sometimes you need to try and slide the end of it around a bit to get it more exposed. There you go. It's out a little bit. You can often just use the multi grips and wind it out. And that way it's not going to go anywhere. Sometimes the pin will just push out. It does. It's nice of it. That's done three eight socket extensions. Work really nicely for pushing piston pins out. Okay, there we go. I'll try and get it off. Stuck now on just on the uh, threads of the head studs. Often you get corrosion in the, the holes in the cylinders and that can obstruct it or even possibly some sealant. Possibly sealant in this case. So that's that. That's the dowel out of the, the top on the earlier engines. They have a small hole in the top. And that restricts the oil coming through, usually on engines with oil cooled cylinders like 900s and the 90s, the 750s, 600 stuff. But these are just a straight through hole. And this is the main difference between the, the DS style and the earlier style is the location of this oil feed. It's not the same, and I don't think they will match up. This one's actually O-ringed. Never had one of these apart before. A little bit interested to what's here. These were always just a, a gasket with a bigger hole in it and a sealant seal for the oil feed to the horizontal cylinder head. But now they've Going to putting an O-ring in there, which is what they used on the vertical years ago. They took the O-ring out and then had leaking problems and then had a couple of goes at replacing the O-ring with a much more complicated system to fix the leaks not having an O-ring generated. But that's that. So what I'm going to do now is grab an 800 cylinder. So these are 800 cylinders and heads. Horizontal ones. And I believe everything will fit on. Yep, and I'm wrong. The stud spacing's different. I guess I could have used the base gasket. Or the head gasket and held it up, couldn't have I? Yep, the stud spacing is different. There you go. Which leads to the next question. Something learned? The stud spacing is different. This is a 900 cylinder. And the 900 is the original big block. I would call it the 350, 400, 500, 600, 650. 695, 750, 800 are all small blocks and the difference predominantly is the distance of these studs. So there's small block spacing and then there's original big block which is 851 and 900 and then the 996, they move the studs apart a bit more again and then the 99, the 998 and the 999 and the something, the 999R with the bigger bore had a wider spacing 
And I think they use the same spacing, maybe maybe even bigger spacing, on their 1098, 1198, 1200 engines. So we'll see if this 900 cylinder fits. And it does, but it won't fit into the crankcases. There you go. So, same stud spacing as the first big blocks, but this is different. So you could certainly machine this out, um, I guess, to slide these cylinders on. Um, it does mean that you could use these cylinders and heads on a 900, which would probably be better <laughs> than using 900 cylinders and heads. Um, but this is smaller and the actual available bore size is smaller because this OD realistically will restrict you to about 91 millimeter bore at the biggest and the 900s are 92s. Um, and you'd need to make a ring up that went around this to support it in the crankcases if you did use it in a 900. Um, so that's interesting. I was hopeful that we might be able to use these cylinders and heads on the earlier engines, but we can't, and we can't really use them on a 900 because of the bore limitations. Um, and the 1000cc stuff is uh, the bigger 996 stud spacing, so you can't use 1000 parts on a 900. I guess you could um, you could bore the cylinders out and, and uh, put some liners in them, um, even aluminium liners and get a mica sealed. You could use cast iron liners, but I sort of dislike cast iron liners. Uh, they're not as long-term usable as the, uh, the mica seal bores for sure. But there you go. That's the main thing I wanted to learn today, and we've learned it. So more about the differences between these engines. This is a 659 piston. And the 659 is a 696 with a shorter stroke. It's about 64.2 millimetres. To bring it under 660 cc's, that's 659 cc's for our learner laws out here. So it's still the 88 mil bore of the 696 and 796, which means it's the same bore size as this 800 piston. But if you look at it, you'll see the difference in stroke because this is 66 mil stroke, and that's the difference. There's a lot of difference in compression height, and that's because when Ducati do these engines, they don't change the deck heights, because that if you, had to, if you change the deck height, you end up needing different length belts and all that sort of thing. So when they shorten the stroke, they use the same connecting rod and the same cylinders, and so to make up the difference in compression height with a shorter stroke, they use a longer piston. Same as the 400, which has a, the 400 has a piston that's about eight millimeters longer than a, a 800 piston. And one of the things that brings up is that it makes the piston heavy. So we'll just compare the weight. The 800 piston, compared to a 750 piston, the 800 piston is about 40 grams lighter, which and it's got a dome on it, whereas a 750 piston is almost flat. So that shows you that the the 800 piston design is a much better design than the 750 piston. No, I'll just tear this out. So 800 piston is 416 grams complete, whereas the 659 piston, and we'll get the extra gudgeon clip we took off, is 454 grams. So that's... Yeah, 39 grams heavier, which is not great. <laughs> it's not really what you want. Um, it's a shorter stroke engine, so the extra weight is not so much of a problem because it's not moving as, as fast as it would be in the 800. So the energy that the rod's absorbing at top dead center overlap isn't as much or possibly isn't as much as it would be with the 800. Certainly, it's, it's probably all in a similar sort of range in terms of how close the rods are going to being stretched apart. But that's one of the issues with these engines is that you, when you start going to a, a shorter stroke, 
if you don't change anything else, you need a longer piston and you get that, an extra 40 grams. That piston's about the same weight as a seven, standard 750 piston was. The difference in the cylinders and heads, this is the 800 cylinder and head. And you can see there's a step on the top of the cylinder here. And that step surface there just sits against the flat surface of the head there. And so these early engines had no head gaskets. It's just a metal on metal join. Um, and it, by and large, works very well. They had O-rings here that seals the oil return. That's the oil return there and there. And that's the oil feed to the head there, which is O-ringed, and the base gasket, that's the oil feed there. Whereas on the, the later design engine, the head is flat like you'd expect to see, head gasket, and then the head with its corresponding flat surface just mates up against that. One thing I just noticed looking at the engine is that these pistons are a normal piston. The pin just runs in the piston, as you would expect. But on the engine, there's no bronze bush in a small end. It's just a steel end of the rod which is quite surprising. The rod's not pressure fed. I can't see a... There's no oil fed up the inside of the rod to lubricate the small end, so they must just use splash lubrication coming out of the inside of the piston rings. There is a groove machined sort of between these two holes here to hold oil in it, but no bush. That's interesting. The more that I look at this, the less I understand why they bothered moving the cylinder studs out. Maybe they just needed more area on top for a head gasket to seal than they would get with the, the stud spacing on these engines. Um, but it's the same stud spacing as the early big blocks, which they don't use on anything anymore, so it's not like it has any commonality with any other model. Um, they certainly haven't used the bore capacity at all because all these engines are 88mm bore. So maybe it was just a, uh, a head gasket sealing area thing and maybe, maybe a little bit of durability or uh, strength. Not that there was ever an issue with uh, the earlier stud spacing. So I find that odd.